Hello everyone, welcome back to Nurses, the heart of healthcare. Keep learning, keep growing. My name is Shanaz. I came back after a long time, but again with an interesting topic for all the healthcare professionals. But before moving ahead, a small and gentle reminder to all my lovely viewers that if you are new to my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you find the content helpful, please do like and share my videos. And I thank all my wonderful viewers who are already my subscribers. Thank you so much for encouraging me, for motivating me and for uh, appreciating my efforts. Okay, uh, microorganisms, as you can see them on the screen over there, we all know that they are of different types. Yes, bacteria, viruses, uh, protozoa, parasites, fungus, they are of different types and they cause different diseases and also they spread through different modes. Yes, that's the reason as healthcare professional we study regarding the chain of infection so that we can break this. Okay, and in chain of infection the most important concept that we need to understand very clearly is regarding the mode of transmission. Yes, how these microorganisms spread from one person to other person. Okay, uh, either direct transmission or indirect transmission. I think this screen is not so clear. Let's see the next one. Okay, as we all know that microorganisms are spread through five main modes of disease transmission. Okay, one is direct contact, droplet spread, airborne, vehicle borne and vector borne. Okay, so there are five main modes of disease transmission. But when it comes to a healthcare organization, in a healthcare setting, microorganisms are spread mainly through three different modes. One is direct contact, droplet spread and airborne transmission. Okay, in this short video, I am going to focus mainly on the airborne tra transmission and droplet transmission. Okay, so as healthcare professional, it's very important for us to understand these two concepts very clearly so that we can take transmission based precaution and protect ourselves and the other patients and the family members. So let's understand the difference between droplet transmission and airborne transmission. Droplet versus airborne. Okay, so when it comes to a respiratory infection, Okay, respiratory infections are spread mainly through the fluid particles that are produced in the respiratory tract of an infected person. And these fluid particles, they contain the bacteria and the virus. Okay, and they are produced in the respiratory tract of the infected person. And they are expelled out when the infected person is coughing, sneezing, talking, singing or uh, even during some medical procedures, okay, like the uh, throat examination, nebulization or suction and all that. Okay, so when these uh, fluid particles, they are expelled out from the respiratory tract of the infected person, either through the nose or through the mouth. And when they come in contact with the susceptible host or the other person, they spread the infection. Now, the main difference between the droplet and the airborne uh, disease transmission is the droplet is, see droplet transmission, droplet infections are spread through large droplets which are more than 5 microns. Okay, the droplet size is more than 5 microns. See, micron is a metric measurement which is very tiny. Okay, uh, 1 millimeter is equal to 1000 microns. So, just imagine how small it is. If you take our human hair, it is 60 to 120 microns wide. An average human hair is 100 microns wide. So it is smaller than that. Even if our take, you take our human RBCs, RBCs are also, you know, about 6 to 8 microns wide. So it is smaller than that. Okay. So these large droplets, which are more than 5 microns wide, which are produced by the infected patient, either during coughing, sneezing, breathing or uh, what we say talking okay or during medical procedures like the throat examination suction nebulization okay when they come in contact with the mucous membrane of t-zone you know what i call it as t-zone the eyes mouth and the nose you make it you make you can make a t on your face with this yes two eyes one nose and one mouth okay so when these droplets they come in contact with the mucous membrane of your T-zone that is eyes, mouth and your nose within a radius of 1 meter, okay, within a distance of 1 meter, uh, then it spreads droplet, it is called a droplet transmission or droplet infection, okay. For example, hoofing cuff, meningococcal infection, avian influenza virus, monkeypox, SARS, 
कोविड नाइन्टीन रूबेला वायरस ओके दीज आर सम एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ द इन्फेक्शन दैट स्प्रेड थ्रू ड्रॉपलेट ट्रांसमिशन नाउ वेन इट कम्स टू एयरबॉर्न द मेन डिफरेंस इज एयरबॉर्न ट्रांसमिशन इज ट्रांसमिटेड थ्रू टाइनी ड्रॉपलेट्स विच आर लेस देन फाइव माइक्रॉन्स ड्रॉपलेट इन्फेक्शन इज थ्रू ड्रॉपलेट्स विच आर मोर देन फाइव माइक्रॉन्स वेर एज एयरबॉर्न इज थ्रू टाइनी ड्रॉपलेट्स विच आर लेस देन फाइव माइक्रॉन्स ओके एंड दे आर लाइक एरोजोल्स कंटेनिंग पार्टिकल्स विच आर लेस देन फाइव माइक्रॉन्स प्रोड्यूस बाय द इन्फेक्टेड पेशेंट ड्यूरिंग कफिंग स्नीजिंग टॉकिंग ब्रीथिंग और ड्यूरिंग द प्रोसीजर्स लाइक द सक्शन नेबलाइजेशन थ्रोट एग्जामिनेशन एक्सेट्रा ओके एंड दे रिमेन सस्पेंडेड इन द एयर फॉर अ लॉन्ग पीरियड ऑफ टाइम एंड दे कैन बी डिस्पर्स इन द एयर करेंट्स एंड दीज पैथोजेंस वेन दे कैन गेट ट्रांसमिटेड and they uh, come in contact with the susceptible people or when the susceptible uh, people they inhale this contaminated air they get into airborne infections okay and this is called airborne transmission example is uh, like mycobacterium tuberculosis measles rubella virus or oh, sorry rubella virus uh, sars and uh, covid-19 again and varicella zoster so these are the examples of some diseases which are spread through airborne transmission see for uh, a person to get infected with airborne transmission the person need not be in the same room where the infected person is okay even if they are in some other they can get airborne transmission because it is through aerosols which can travel a long distance through air currents but for droplet it should be like within the uh, same room okay so droplets are like you know they are heavy right so i think there is one picture yeah you can understand from here see you can see this droplet spread is through large droplets which are more than 5 micron see so they can travel only up to you know maximum of 1 to 2 meters uh, radius okay distance and then they drop off with the gravity they fall down okay and maybe they then they contaminate the surroundings and again the person has to come into that uh, contact with the surroundings to get infected but then they fall off but whereas airborne transmission is through the aerosols right the tiny particles okay uh, which remain suspended for a longer period of time and they are capable of traveling uh, long okay so they can spread uh, to the people who are over long distance also okay so this is the main difference between droplet spread and airborne spread so this is important for us to understand uh this concept so that we can prevent we can take transmission based precaution and protect ourselves to protect ourselves from these uh, kind of infection we need to follow proper barrier nursing and use proper physical barriers like pp yes personal protective equipments so that we can protect ourselves and the other patients who are not infected and their family members okay proper sterilization disinfection hand hygiene is very important for us as healthcare professionals to follow to protect ourselves if we are healthy we can take care of our patients and it's important that we give proper care and infection free care to the other patients okay so uh, let us uh, understand and follow this okay so if this short video has helped you in understanding the difference between the airborne transmission and the droplet transmission then please do subscribe my channel and like and share my videos okay and uh, thank you so much for motivating me for encouraging me i am looking forward for more and more subscribers love and uh, appreciation from all of you thank you so much for appreciating my this uh, small but heartful efforts okay uh, and i as, as i always say that keep learning keep growing and uh, remain physically mentally and spiritually strong and help others in whatever way you can stay humble stay calm stay cool and uh, keep your ego away and keep learning okay thank you so much